Hey guys, it's Paul here. In today's video, I wanna talk about the new data that just came out from the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics on the projected 10-year job outlook for pharmacists. And I wanna compare it to last year's data and also give my opinion on what I think is going to happen. So let's get started. All right, hope all of you are doing well. You know, my hair is getting long from this whole pandemic, so I have to use a headband now because it's always getting in my eyes. I'm not sure when I'm gonna cut it, but I'm gonna see how long I can grow it out and and uh, maybe get a ponytail or something like that. All right, all right. So a lot of you have probably already seen the new Bureau of Labor and Statistics data on pharmacist outlook on this 10 year projection. You've probably seen it on Reddit or social media, people sharing it. And I've taken about two weeks or a week now to make this video because I've just been a little bit busy with work and whatnot and actually I just, finished getting Ill, uh, better from being sick. Uh, I'm not really sure what I had. It's some sort of viral infection, I'm guessing, like the flu. I did get tested for COVID and it came back negative. Uh, I had a fever for like three days and uh, body chills, headache, uh, fatigue, uh, a little bit of dizziness. It was, it was pretty much flu-like symptoms, uh, but I tested negative, so uh, my fever has resolved uh, after three days, and so I'm going to be heading back to work pretty soon here. All right, so before we get started, the most important thing about the next 10 years for pharmacist jobs is to smash that like button. All right, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing as well. So let's start and do dive into these new numbers. So let me take a look here. So basically, the U.S. Labor and Statistics, um, they release new data every year on every occupation basically and what they think will happen and so compared to last year okay so last year's numbers for the 10-year outlook for pharmacists I made a video actually on this and you can see it on my YouTube channel I believe it was the Andrew Yang uh, predicts that pharmacist jobs will be automated and in that video I said that you know the 10-year projection is no growth for pharmacists and it was actually just minus 100 jobs uh, and then in that video, I said, I think this is actually a very conservative projection and I think it will be far worse than they actually predict. And so then fast forward one year later, the new data shows a 3% decline in pharmacist jobs in the next 10 years and a 10,500 job loss. So that's over 10,000% increase from last year for job loss. Uh, that's very significant. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen next year, what the next year's 10-year projection is going to be like. But basically, they're attributing this to what we all know, and I've, you've probably seen all my videos talk about it, is there's going to be a contraction in retail pharmacists, the retail space or community pharmacy, because of automation. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are uh, are not really talking about artificial intelligence a little bit, but I think that will be part of the equation on automation and reducing pharmacist work and less pharmacists will be needed in the in the future. And we'll be moving more towards mail order pharmacy, etc. So they also say in this, um, the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics that job growth, there'll be some job growth in the hospital and clinic sector you know, I, I'm not really sure on that side just because with the whole pandemic and everything, there's actually been job freezes, job losses, and job elimination. Like things that were coming down the pipeline have been eliminated or frozen at the moment. Those That might be just temporary due to, due to the pandemic and then there'll probably be an upswing in the over the next 10 years. So that could be accurate. And then, so you might be a student uh, and being worried and whatnot, what do I do? A prospective student or you're currently in school or you're currently a new graduate and unable to find work, what should you do, right? So this whole year, 2020 has just been really weird. You know, it's probably the worst year of most of our lives, uh, I would say. Uh, it's just getting more weird. And, <laughs> uh, and so it affected a lot of people's jobs, you know, uh, uh, coming out of school. And so you're going to have to be a little bit more creative in finding work, right? So hopefully you've been planting seeds along the way while you're in school, doing residency, doing your internship, 
to have those network connections and strong relationships that can help you find work. You know, throughout my pharmacist career, all my jobs that I have gotten have been through networking, through strong relationships, right? Uh, and so that's something you should work on all the time throughout your life, not just while you're in school and, and getting trying to find a job. And uh, a good area to look into uh, that might be cliche or said too much now is, of course, LinkedIn, where you can start finding people to try to connect with. Obviously, if you just message people, hey, help me, and, you know, that's just basically spamming. So, you know, that's not a real relationship. So I wouldn't, but LinkedIn is somewhere you, where you can start. Now, a lot of people have been talking about also non-traditional pharmacist jobs. And the, the definition of non-traditional pharmacist would be, for me, is non-retail, non-hospital, where you're either on the floor as a clinical pharmacist or you're in distribution in the central pharmacy. So there's also non-traditional pharmacists that work in the hospital setting, such as informatics pharmacy. And these are the types of jobs that you'll have to either specialize or figure out a way to get into these niches. And I don't know if those that job area, that job market is going to fulfill all the job losses that is going to occur in the retail space. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what's going to happen. All right, quick pause. If you are interested in trading stocks, I have a link in the description box for Robinhood or Webull. And if you sign up, we both get free stocks. All right, let's resume the video. For those of you who already are working in retail, uh, I would highly suggest that you build out your skills and uh, start looking into other uh, areas in pharmacy just to kind of diversify yourself in case you lose your job. Uh, and for those who are already working in, in pharmacy, I wouldn't worry too much about this job loss. Just make sure you're able to uh, adapt and change to new uh, a new environment that pharmacy is going to be changing in, in this coming 10 years with technology implement, implemented into uh, our workflows and changing everything basically. Uh, if you're willing to adapt and change and learn, then you will be able to keep up. And I've that was something that Brian Fung had uh, basically taught me. And, uh, and I mean, I knew this, but he kind of opened my eyes. Yeah, we're going to have to really change and adapt uh, to move forward. So what do I think about those who are thinking about pharmacy school? Should you go into pharmacy now knowing this data? Uh, well... I think if you're super passionate about the profession and you are aware of the finances, the financial aspect that you're getting yourself into, um, then sure, you can, you can always find a way to make it work. Uh, I'm not saying that every single person who goes into pharmacy is going to be unemployed. Uh, it's just going to be a lot harder for a lot of people. To find work uh, if you don't put in the extra effort. Now, I want to point out that you have to have to research the financial aspect because a lot of people don't realize how much money they're borrowing and when they come out they're surprised at how much they have to pay back in student loans and they're surprised to see their paycheck because it, they thought it was going to be a lot higher than it actually will be. So that's something to consider. Now, we're also seeing decreases in wages for pharmacists in the retail sector for new graduates uh, and new people being hired on. Uh, and I s project that that will continue in the next 10 years. There'll be pressure on pharmacist wages just because of supply and demand. All right, so that's basically it for this video. You know, I really just wanted to share the new information and show that, you know, what I've been talking about in the last year about the pharmacist market is not anecdotal, made up, mumbo jumbo to scare people. You know, it's 
the real data out there by the US government telling you that the pharmacist job market is going to decline. There's going to be less jobs in the future for pharmacists. There's less need for us. Um, that's not to say that it's going to come true. We can't always 100% predict the outcome of what will actually happen. But these are, you know, pretty accurate, I would say, uh, good, you know, projections to go off of. So, you know, take these things into consideration when you're looking into uh, pharmacists, uh, being a pharmacist and the pharmacist jobs uh, going into pharmacy school. So that's just something I wanted to share with everyone and make sure that everyone has the information they need to make the decision that's right for them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button for me to stabilize the job market. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. And if you are interested in trading stocks, I have referral links in the description box for Robinhood and Webull. If you sign up, you get some free stocks. I get some free stocks. We're gonna be all happy. And remember to eat your vegetables.